What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything you need to know about and what's going on here in our country on a daily basis. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, happy Festivus, happy Kwanzaa. Um, yeah, it's a blustery winter day. We're getting a white Christmas if you uh, hoped and prayed for that. Uh, albeit it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's maybe a little bit too much white and a little bit too blustery as this winter storm is uh, kind of crushing uh, the nation. There's over a million people without power here uh, today. And uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, God bless you. Hopefully you have power. We have power so far, so far. Uh, 50 plus mile an hour winds where I'm at, uh, negative five degrees, uh, negative 30 degree wind chill here in Ohio. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. You can see my tree over there. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's still snowing and it's going to be cold here for a while, cold here for a while. Um, we're not going outside until we have to. You know, till we have to, um, you know, we're going to, you know, go over some family's house a little bit. Um, family's coming here a little bit. Um, our family's not far away, just literally like uh, one town over, which is just a few minutes. Um, so it won't be that bad. It won't be that bad. Um, you know, but uh, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Let me know if you're traveling for the holidays. Uh, you know, there's tens of thousands of flights canceled and, um, package just canceled, you know, you know, UPS, FedEx, Amazon, all those things, they're having a really hard time, you know, shipping those things and, you know, flights canceled for that as well. Uh, let me know if you're having a, uh, home alone issue being stuck at the, at the, uh, airport. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Scranton. Uh, <laughs> if you, if you know that, uh, you know that scene. Um, yeah. So somebody's probably stuck at Scranton right now. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, lo I love those movies, right? We watched, so we watched Home Alone 1 with our son Julian, who's four and a half. He absolutely was just dying laughing. Uh, we're gonna watch Home Alone 2 here with him as well. And he, he wasn't scared, he wasn't scared, so he, he, uh, he was just, uh, you know, he bounces off the walls, he's just got too much, too much energy, and uh, yeah kind of crazy here. So uh, also I have a trivia question for you guys here in this video. Uh, we're giving away cash here to our viewers, thousands of dollars here in total. And I'll have a double trivia question here for you guys tomorrow. We'll have a video here at 3 p.m. for you guys here on Christmas Eve and uh, no videos on Christmas Day uh, for you guys. We're taking the day off and uh, we'll resume our videos here uh, the day after Christmas uh, for you guys here. So uh, yeah. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. We're going to be uh, enjoying the day, enjoying the day. Hope you guys are here too. And uh, our Christmas Eve will be kind of a, a Christmas Eve special here. We're going to be uh, showing you guys some special stuff here for Christmas. And, uh, you know, it'll be, it'll be, I'll have my wife on here uh, for that video. And uh, maybe our son, our son Julian and, uh, It'll be a nice little Christmas Eve special, so uh, stay tuned for that. And we'll have a double double trivia question for that, double giveaways. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. So uh, the White House and President Biden says if you have student loans, don't pay off your student loan debt in January. The Biden Education Department says, and tell this to anybody who, uh, if you don't have student loans, but you have you know family members or friends, um, you know, share this video with them. Millions of borrowers would be making payments they may not owe. So this just came out here from the White House. Here's here's what they have to say. This week, the Department of Education sent an email to federal federal borrowers, reminding them that the student loan payment pause has been extended beyond December 31st. Uh, either through all the way through June 30th, which would be a whole six more months, or until the lawsuits challenging the broad student loan debt relief are resolved, whichever comes first. Since President Biden announced up to $20,000 in student loan debt relief for federal borrowers making under $125,000 a year, 
Two courts so far have ruled the implementation of the plan should be put on pause in response to the two separate lawsuits. Since mid-October, the Biden administration has stopped accepting new applications for student loan debt relief. And after the Supreme Court agreed to take on the cases in February, the department announced an extension of the payment pause, saying, quote, you will not have to make your loan payments that you would have that that would have restarted in January. The department wrote in an email reviewed by its business insider. And while litigation is preventing us from providing the relief needed to avoid these harms, we don't think it is right to ask borrowers to pay on these loans. They wouldn't have to pay were it not for the lawsuits challenging these programs. Millions of borrowers would be making payments they may not owe, this is a quote, or payments that are higher than they should be under the Biden-Harris debt relief plan. That is not fair. The Supreme Court has announced that they will start on February 28th, begin arguments, uh, begin hearing arguments on the two separate lawsuits that have blocked the relief. I don't know why they're waiting all the way till then, but I guess they've paused payments until then. So it's not that bad, I guess. Um, it's just more time that your payments will be paused and no interest will be accumulated. So I guess it's kind of a win, I guess. One of them filed by six Republican-led states argued that the debt relief would hurt their state's tax revenues. Wow. I guess they're not worried about the actual people that live in the states getting the relief. They're more worried about their tax revenues instead of helping the people. You guys could let me know your thoughts on that. And the other lawsuit was filed by two single people, two borrowers, who sued because they did not qualify for the full $20,000 amount of relief. Wow. And if I recall correctly, one of those people had gotten thousands of dollars of paycheck protection program uh, relief, though, another government program, which is kind of hypocrisy, but I, you know, <laughs> I digress. The primary argument about both lawsuits was that Biden overstepped his authority to cancel student debt relief by using the HEROES Act of 2003, which gives the education secretary the ability to waive or modify student loan balances in connection with a national emergency like the pandemic. I do want to note this, though, here. Still, even with the extension of the payment pause, Biden administration has not indicated if it will pursue any alternative routes to relief. So there's a chance that borrowers could resume payments without a reduction to their balances should the Supreme Court rule the plan illegal. So basically, and I've actually mentioned this, is that even if these... Um, if the Supreme Court does rule that uh, they that they're for some reason one one way or another that they the they're, they're, that this uh, student loan forgiveness is not going to go through, the Biden administration can reform and reword and you know redetail the student loan forgiveness plan and then push it back through. Um, but it could be a lengthy pass process to go through all this again. Uh, but that also could mean a repause of the student loan payments and um, interest. So keep that in mind. Remember, there's over 40 million people that have student loan debt. If anything, if anything, it is a win for people to have their interest and payments paused uh, for that as well. So it's just keep that in mind because all this time you're not accumulating any interest. It's basically like a 0% loan, which you can't get anywhere, especially with interest rates nowadays. Uh, we look at mortgage rate mortgage rates at 7%, and that is with a collateralized loan. Basically, it has a, a home as collateral.
Okay, uh, student loans really don't have collateral. You know, there's there's nothing they can <laughs> uh, claw back as collateral. They can't take you as the collateral there. So, um, you know, rem remember any loan that has collateral always has a lower interest rate. You know, that's why credit cards have much higher interest rates because there's not really collateral most of the time that they can claw back. Um, that's why the average credit card interest rate now is at 20% and the highest credit card interest rates are at 35%, uh, which are the highest they have ever been. Uh, the Federal Reserve just raised interest rates here again just a few weeks ago, and they're expected to raise interest rates several more times in 2023. And I've had a lot of questions of people saying, why, Jimmy, why do they keep raising interest rates? And um, I actually said this before they raised interest rates at all. So the U.S. actually was criticized for not raising interest rates sooner. The U.S. was actually, remember that the Federal Reserve is actually a separate entity from the government. A lot of people think they're a government entity. They're, they're kind of, they kind of are perceived as one, but they're, they're slightly different. They're a separate entity from from like say the Biden administration or the Trump administration. Now the um, the president gets to appoint the head of the Fed. So former President Donald Trump appointed Jerome Powell as the head of the Fed. And Biden elected to keep Jerome Powell as the head of the Fed, even though Trump appointed him and he is a Republican. Uh, he elected to keep him there, okay? So um, Jerome Powell is the head of the Federal Reserve. Also remember here that Jerome Powell is not the only person that gets to make these interest rate decisions. He, it's not a single guy. They have a whole panel of Federal Reserve presidents. So there's like the New York Federal Reserve president and you know, the, you know, the Los Angeles Federal Reserve president. And they all vote on it. So it's not just this one guy making these decisions. It's a whole panel and they take a vote and then the vote makes the decision. Okay, so these are all like, you know, well-educated, versed people, and they're all taking a vote, and then the vote makes the decision, okay? Um, countries all around the world were raising interest rates, actually a little bit before the U.S. Canada was raising interest rates before the U.S., and, and a lot of Europe actually as well. It, raising interest rates is kind of a tried-and-true strategy to lowering inflation. And we are actually seeing inflation come down. Remember that the Social Security... Um, COLA raise is at 8.7%. So uh, inflation was at 8.7%. Now it's actually come down to 7.1%. So one of a couple areas we have seen inflation come down notably, uh, number one is gas prices. Gas prices have come down significantly, significantly. We can see here uh, U.S. gas prices as of uh, the day before Christmas Eve here. U.S. national gas prices, of course, this varies per state. Um, but 309, 309 a week ago was 317, almost 318. So it's come down about nine cents in the last week. So it's coming down almost every day. A month ago was three sixty. A month ago was three sixty. That's a big drop in one month. Think a month ago was three sixty. Now it's three oh nine. That's a that's a fifty one cent drop in thirty days. That's a huge drop. And for people traveling right before Christmas. That's really good. There's a lot of states in the two dollar ish range, or in you know two dollars something, you know two ninety, two fifty, two something. In fact, let me know in the comment section if you're in the two dollar something range. Uh, comment down below what city and state you are and how much your gas is. I know a lot of the southern and southeast states, you know Texas, Florida. Um, large, large states there are in the $2 range, not California, unfortunately. Uh, you know, they, their, their taxes alone are almost $2. No, 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 not quite, but their taxes alone are like a dollar. Um, and you know, they have a different blend of uh, fuel, but, um, really it's a good trend. It's a good trend. Now I don't, 
think it's going to continue forever. It would be nice if it did. Um, you know, I just don't trust gas as far as I can throw a barrel of oil. But um, it's really good to see this trend Fifth, down 51 cents in a month is the best trend I've ever seen ever. Diesel also down here. Diesel at three. I'm sorry, four sixty nine, and a month ago it was five twenty six. A month ago it was five twenty six. Now it's at four sixty nine. So what is that? Thirty one cents plus twenty six cents. So that's like I don't know what is that? Fifty seven cents or something like that. Um, so that's down significantly as well. I'll tell you here in Ohio though, I seen diesel for double the price of regular here the other day, which is absolutely just price gouging to its finest. The these gas companies are absolutely just, you know, diesel takes less refining to make than regular. So for it to be for diesel price to be double the price of regular, I know it doesn't show it here, but here in Ohio, it was literally double the price of regular. You know, um, gas was in the $2 something range and diesel was literally double the price. Um, just price gouging, absolutely price gouging. Unbelievable. Insane. So let me know what gas prices are in your area. But it's really nice to see that. So that's one area where we've seen inflation come down. You know, some other places where we have seen inflation come down are home prices, and car prices, unfortunately, that's a little bit of a misleading uh, statistic because if you're not buying either of those in cash, which most people aren't, because you know, uh, just under two thirds of people, sixty to sixty-four percent of Americans, are living paycheck to paycheck. So if they go to buy a car or a house or lease a car, they have to make payments on it. So, uh, albeit we're seeing car prices come down, they're not selling for over MSRP anymore, which is a great thing. And home prices are coming down, they're not selling for over asking price anymore, and they're not having to outbid 20 other people anymore, which is a good thing. The interest rates have more than doubled. So, we've seen uh, home interest rates go from 2 point something percent or 3% to 7%. That's added like a thousand dollars on average to the average home mortgage, which is a nightmare. So people are saving some money on the home buying price, the actual price that they have to pay for the house. They don't have to outbid 20 other people, but they have to pay more for interest. Now, a savvy person would in a couple years from now, when home interest rates come down, they go from 7% down to 6%, 5% would refinance or try to find a home mortgage company. Uh, I'm with a fifth third. Uh, there are probably other co uh, companies like this that will let you actually just pay a small nominal fee. Uh, fifth third is, is kind of a regional company, but I think they serve like you know 20 states. Um, they'll let you pay like call a rate relock fee. It's like, you know, 200 bucks, something like that, where they'll just let you just relock in the new current rate. So when it goes from 7% to 6%, pay 200 bucks and you just get the new the new rate. So it goes to 7% to 6%, that can save you $200 a month. That, that's a lot. So you pay $200 to them one time, you get the new fee, the new rate, but you're saving $200 every month it's worth paying the $200, right? Um, so there's some, there's a lot of banks like that nowadays. I don't know how many, you know, but it, of course it depends on, it's better than paying the whole, going through the whole refinance process and paying, you know, 3000 or $5,000 in closing fees and doing that whole thing because most people aren't going to do that. But they would do it if it goes from 7% cent to say 5% because that's a big deal. That might, that might save you, you know, over the course of the year, thousands of dollars in interest. So you got to keep your eye on that because interest rate is very, very important. Like I said, going from a 3% interest rate to a 7% interest rate on your home could mean $1,000 a month in interest. It's a lot. It's a lot. This, this, this is for car interest rate. Now, remember, your car interest rate is not going to cost that much because 
your, the loan isn't that much. But the average car, I just seen the statistics saying the average new car payment is like $700 a month. Yeah, so it's very expensive. Now, of course, that's the average car payment. That doesn't mean everybody's car payment is going to be that. Some people are going to be lower. Some people are going to be higher. Um, and that's for a new car. So prices are getting up there. Prices are getting up there. But we are seeing stuff come down in different areas, in different areas. So, yeah, you guys can let me know your thoughts here. But let me get to a trivia question here before I forget it, before I forget it. All right, here is today's trivia question. If you can guess the answer, you could win cash directly from me. It's completely free to do. All you need to do is leave a comment down below with whatever your guess is. If you guess correctly, you'll be entered into the pool of people who have guessed correctly. And from there, we have a random comment picker to um, randomly pick the winners. Okay, uh, We have a few people picked uh, from every video and the winners will get $50 each. Uh, I, th I think I've covered everything there. If you've been watching my other videos, you've kind of heard this before. And uh, all, you, all you need to do is leave a comment here. So today's trivia question is, and also for tomorrow's Christmas Eve video, which will be at 3 p.m., I won't have any videos on Christmas Day. We're taking some videos off. Gonna take some time off. Um, for Christmas Eve, I will have two trivia questions for you. So double the chances to win, double the winners. Um, today's trivia question is, what job does the abominable, the abominable snow monster get at the North Pole? What job does the abominable snow monster get at the North Pole? If you have a guess or you think you know the answer, please leave a comment down below. Also, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on new videos. Normally, videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Of course, we'll have a few less videos here for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. But uh, if you click the bell icon after you subscribe, you'll get notifications when we go live. And I'll keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. And also, thanks so much for liking and sharing these videos. You can click here to watch my newest video next. And don't miss out on our Christmas Eve uh, special here. Uh, it'll be on 3 p.m. on Christmas Eve. So thanks for watching. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. We love you guys. Uh, you're a part of our families. And I hope you guys uh, have a merry, merry Christmas and a happy holidays. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.